Alright, what's going on guys? Try back again. Here to bring you another video. This one's going to be doing a video talking about a real world life topic and that is, is post-secondary education really worth it? Okay, so every now and then I like to do some serious topics about life, real world, all that kind of stuff and get it out there in my channel for people to uh, watch and see if they're doing some research or if you know they're just younger viewers maybe in high school or just starting college or university or haven't gone yet uh, and uh, just kind of want to hear my thoughts on it since uh, I did go to both college and university and finished both in uh, computer science studies. Um, so I thought, you know, I'd go ahead and give my thoughts on this one. This was suggested in the q and I was doing and I decided I should do a whole video on this because I do have a lot of younger viewers and I think that maybe it will help them out to uh, maybe make some decisions in their life and, uh, and go along the best track for them. So is post-secondary education really worth it? So after you finish high school and you're deciding what you want to do with your life, um, is the best route to go to college or university? Is it sometimes better to wait? Is it sometimes better to get a job and work? Well, I mean, I think it depends on, on the person and on the set of circumstances. Uh, the unfortunate truth is that post-secondary education is becoming so expensive that a lot of people just can simply not afford it, especially in the United States. Here in Canada, we have programs where you can take student loans and uh, really help people get through, and that's a fantastic thing. In the states, some universities and uh, state schools are so expensive that a lot of people can't afford to go, quite simply. Now, if someone can get a scholarship, then awesome, you know, you can't go wrong with that. But the reality is 98, 99% of people are not going to be one of those and are going to have to pay their way through it. And if their parents can't help them out, then they're going to have to work at a job in order to do it. Uh, that being said, I think it's probably best for people to, you know, have a part-time job while they're going if they have to go at a slower rate, if they have to take instead of five courses a semester, if they have to take three or four and then work at their job as well too, um, you know, that's a better route I think than taking full time and, and not working at all. Um, because number one, you lose, you lose the work experience, which a lot of employers when you finish college or university, really what they want to see is, uh, okay, great, you've got this education and that got you this interview. So your education got you this interview. But what experience do you have on top of that? Why should I hire you? When I finished college, I had to go to about, I want to say about 20 different interviews, maybe 20 or 30, before I finally got a position. And unfortunately, the position I got was close to minimum wage pay when I started. And this was after I finished uh, college, or, you know, college first. Um, and, you know, it... It's, it's one of those types of things where businesses nowadays in this economy are trying to get people in and they're trying to pay them the least amount of money they can possibly pay them to keep them there. But on the flip side of that, they still want to get good people to work for their businesses. So it's a trade-off. They want to pay the least amount out and get the best person they can get for the money. So the first thing most people will have to do once they finish uh, college or university is they're going to have to start at a way lower rate of pay than they probably wanted to, especially in the economy today with job cuts, all the cutbacks and everything like that. And they're going to have to basically fight and work their way up. Uh, the chain or maybe not up one company. Maybe start with a company, get experience, and then you know, go to a different company that might offer them better or, um, you know, maybe start their own thing and really have to keep their options open in order to, you know, get to the point where they can make a, a good living. Uh, and that's the reality of the market these days is it's heavily competitive and you always have to keep your options open. You always have to be looking for different possibilities. This, of course, is all after you finish and things you can expect. So my number one advice would be to anyone who's studying a certain field in college or university, try to find a position in that field. I don't care how loosely related it is. Just try to do the best you can. It is very um, disconcerting sometimes when you're when you're studying something and just no one will give you a job in that area. Uh, it's it's a battle. You have to fight. You have to hand out you know I don't know hundreds of resumes, hundreds of applications. You got to ask to talk to managers. You got to go into different places. Maybe you'll have to volunteer even to get a little bit of experience in that field and just you know do everything you possibly can do to try to get into a position within the field you're studying. Uh, and if it's something so abstract that there are no positions in the market in what you're studying, 
business-wise, you probably shouldn't be studying it. If it's something so theoretical or something so impractical that you, you can't see a way to tie it to an actual uh, way to make a living in the market, then it's probably not something you should be studying because what could end up happening, and I see this happen to a lot of people, is they could go to a university for something very theoretical, okay? I don't, it could be, you know, high level math or it could be history or it could be English or, or areas of study that are very theoretical. And there's really no way to tie them to making a living in the market, uh, the free market. So the problem with that is, is that they'll end up finishing whatever they're taking and they won't have a way to tie that education to a living, to tie it to income. And if there's that break there where there's no way and, or they can't envision a way to make money with what they're studying, then the unfortunate reality is they probably shouldn't be doing it, even if they love it. You know, that's one thing you hear a lot is I'm, I'm studying this because I love this. Well, that's, that's great and everything like that, but unless you're getting like top tier marks, like, you know, your 90s and this kind of stuff to the point where you could maybe, you know, use that education to go on to maybe a master's or become a teacher or these different types of um, fields of, these different types of uh, fields of work. Um, most people end up pouring tons of money into uh, a heavy theoretical um, education that unfortunately has no practical basis. And if that's the case, then that could be dangerous because then they could finish and they could have these huge student loans and really no real world way to pay them back. And that's going to cause later on in life a lot of distress, a lot of frustration, a lot of difficulty in making a living, living on their own, um, paying each month you know, back their student loans. And it's just an unnecessary additional payment when we all have enough as it is in life in this market anyway. We all have to pay for our rent, our food, our living expenses, all these different things. We don't, really don't need a huge student loan payment on top of that to have to pay that back for the next 10 or 20 years. The unfortunate thing is that schools want so much money, it's almost impossible for anyone to do it any other way. What I did uh, personally was I went to college first because it was way cheaper and it was more practical so that I could earn a living after I finished college and uh, you know work in the field that I study because it's very hands-on, very practical, creates uh, a lot of it's like work training. Some people don't even view college as real education. Um, they, they view it as work training and however you want to view it, that's, that's your choice, it's up to you. But the truth is, is that most of the things you study at a college level uh, versus a university level, um, you can usually apply those directly to a position once you finish. So you can finish you know, your college uh, diploma program and then you can go out into the market afterwards and you can find a position, even if it's low pay to start, in your field and work your way up that way. Versus a lot of times, if you're, if you're taking something very theoretical, there's no real position waiting for you when you're done or, or even one you can apply to. So my biggest piece of advice to people that are deciding what to take in college or university is make sure you have a plan for what you want to do in your life and, and, and where you want to go with your education because it's great to have, um, but you got to be able to tie it to something. And then go through that plan, try to get experience in that field while you're studying that field so that when you're done, you can go ahead and get a position in that uh, industry and work your way up um, and maybe in five or ten years be able to make a good living and uh, be debt free and all these great things that, uh, that we all should probably strive to be even though we do live in a credit card society unfortunately. But um, so, so that's my biggest advice is, is to create a roadmap, create a plan for where you want to go, how are you going to get there and um, you know, follow, follow that path and make it realistic. And the process of what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis for those few years while you're in school really is going to show your result. So in other words, we wouldn't have to see, if I was to look at what you in particular are doing in college and the hours that you put in on a weekly basis, if you were to show me on a weekly basis with consistency exactly what you're doing on a weekly basis, so you're studying this many hours, you're working this many hours, and it adds up to be somewhere around 50 or 60 hours a week in your discipline, in your field, uh, I would pretty much guarantee you over the course of three to five years that person would be very successful at what they're doing. It's The process exposes the result. It's like looking at a conveyor belt. 
you see the process coming through on a weekly basis, you can guess what the result's going to be at the end. Granted, there is always uncertainty in life. There's always, you know, catastrophes, things that could happen, um, but you can't let those get you down. You've got to get right back on track and uh, head towards your roadmap, head towards your goals, head towards the things that you want to do. And over the course of three to five years of, of doing that, you know, your, your weekly, um, you know, heavy load, like, like I said, 50 hours, you know, don't be, the thing is with 40 hours, a lot of people want to lock in at 40. The unfortunate part is in 40 hours, you get trapped. You can't, you can't really make leeway and, and get anywhere because if you're just working 40 hours, you're trapped. You can't, you can't study if you're just wanting to seal the deal at 40 hours in a, in a work week. That process right there will lead to a result of basically always being just where you're at unless you look for other things and try to, or if you're getting really good experience in that 40 hours. So um, don't be afraid to put in the extra 10 or 20, do the 50, 60 hours a week, whatever you have to do, and in the long run, it'll pay off. You'll be debt free. You'll be uh, working in a job you probably like more. Now, every job kind of sucks in some regard or other, but you'll probably enjoy it more than you would have if you just were, were capped at that 40 hours, if you were just studying by itself and not really striving and doing both work and studying in order to uh, get a good position later on and um, you know really uh, make a good living. So just to sum it all up, I hope you guys enjoyed this little quick um, in my opinion, crash course on what to do with regards to education. It is a good thing to do, but not always. There, there are negatives to it too, and people always forget about what happens when people spend a lot of time and a lot of money studying something, and they don't have a way to make that money back, and they get themselves financially in a bad position. Uh, that's an unfortunate thing that does happen to a lot of people that study very theoretical things and uh, there's nothing to tie it to in the market afterwards. So be wary of that and don't be afraid to put in the 50 hours of your studying plus your work and uh, go through the summer too. A lot of people are afraid, oh, I want to take the summer off. Don't take the summer off. Go through. Take courses in the summer if you can, if your college or university offers it. Most of them do or work all summer and save for the year to stay out of debt. The best thing you can do for yourself is get an education and once you finish, still have a position, regardless of what it is where you're earning income, and to not have any debt. Even if it takes you another year or two, instead of three or four years, if it takes you five or six to get your education, if it's debt-free five or six, it's worth it. So those are my thoughts on post-secondary education and whether or not it's worth it. Definitely, but create your roadmap and make sure that you're leading towards a result. Your conveyor belt, your process of a weekly hour system will show your result in the long run. And once you finish, don't be afraid to apply for a thousand jobs before you get hired. It might take you a year of going to interviews and 50 interviews in this economy, in this market, and that's normal. Don't beat yourself up about it if you're facing that. That's the market we live in. That's the world we live in. It's heavily competitive, and you might have to go to 50 interviews before you get the position you want and that will pay you well. Anyway, those are my thoughts on post-secondary education. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope it helps a few people out there. Even if it helps one person, it's worth my time to do it. And uh, that's pretty much all i got to say. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I'll call it here. That's it for this video. I'll see you for the next one. This is Trev. Have a safe.